Well, welcome everybody to New Polities Podcast. We are very excited today to announce something that we've been working on for three years now, four well, years yeah, now, something, something like that. Like that. Um, mm-hmm. It's been very hard to keep this a secret. We haven't. We We actually have not done it at all. Um, (laughs) We actually announced it first to the attendees to the conference a week and a half ago or so. And it is this. It is a college of St. Joseph the Worker. Pop the champagne. Yep. We should have brought you. I have coffee. (laughs) <laughs> Same thing. Rise and grind, baby. <laughs> uh, the College of St. Joseph the Worker is a unique college model where people simultaneously study the Catholic intellectual tradition to get a BA degree while also simultaneously training in the skilled trades. Uh, we have five carpentry, HVAC, electricals, plumbing, and masonry. Uh, so as to become an apprentice and ultimately work your ways towards a journeyman status in order to graduate financially net positive instead of up to your eyeballs in debt, which often happens. And with a with a job, a vocation, yep. and a head full of information, yeah. and knowledge. So we're try- totally trying to call the bluff on the great divorce between the head and the hands, yep. reintegrate them, uh, taking Christ himself, the incarnate flesh who picked up a hammer for most of his life, as John Paul II said, and uh, and to and really take seriously, I think more than anything, the idea that if Christ does reveal true humanity to us, then we really have to take seriously the craftsman side of, of his life. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So we're here with Andrew Jones, a board member and teaching fellow, Mark Barnes, professor of this college, and Mike Sullivan, El Presidente. El Presidente. <laughs> so, and you. And me, oh, yeah. Jacoby Mom. Yeah. I grew with the business model originally, but I had many more. <laughs> but it was all, it was kind of one of those, you know, you write out comes some specs and you get a lot better minds on it and it becomes a good product. He's moving into a janitorial position. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'll be I'll written myself out of it. <laughs> so, Have you see me cleaning toilets? <laughs> you're no, you're good, actually. Uh, yeah. you're Thank good. you. Yeah. Sparkled. Yeah. Yeah. So you detail. said that students graduate financially net positive. And to me, this seems like one of the most exciting parts of the college, not just simply because of that money, (laughs) but because the inability to imagine education without crippling debt seems to be indicative of a larger problem in higher education today. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can talk about this in a lot of ways, like the commodification of... um, higher education, the way that higher education functions more as a cert- certification process mm-hmm. rather than an yep. actual um, education f- and formation and becoming a kind of person. You instead get a certificate to be able to work certain jobs. And even that is mm-hmm. less, it's not even a good certificate anymore. It, <laughs> right. it, it used to be a good one. But it's right. like, it's like this, the, the, the do not pass go without this certificate. Right. Like, right. Yeah. You yeah. can't be in the middle class unless you have one. <laughs> but I wanted to, before we kind of go into maybe the, the reasoning behind Gra- like graduating students financially net positive without debt, which is a phenomenal goal. It also, I think, seems to most people an impossible goal. Like how, mm-hmm. how could you do that? You know, why, why would we have what we have if there was a way to, to do it otherwise, right? <laughs> because right. no one wants debt. So could you, like, explain the mechanics of well, graduating net positive? Part of the training yeah. for a tradesman is doing the work. And so if you're doing that while you're going through the program, you're able to earn money. Right. And um, the other thing is we don't have the overhead that larger universities have. Yeah. We're very, what would you call us, lean and mean? Spartan. <laughs> Simple. Yeah. Spartan. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. right. And so we can make the tuition quite affordable. Right. And uh, the students themselves will be earning money while they're going through the program. So it, it works out. Um, yeah, I think maybe, for the first year – kids are going to be in our workshop training in-house at that point they they won't be making any money and there's a couple different reasons mike can wax eloquent on it better than i can but because they're dumb at first yeah i mean (laughs) (laughs) let's just be straight (laughs) you got to take a whole year to learn how not to suck you know and like for the most part if you're new on a job site yeah you're working you're sweeping but it's also not a great way to really focus on enhancing skill um, right. it, because you're tr- trying to get jobs done. You're trying to save right, customer right, right. money, all that sort of thing. Yep. And then on the other side, you just are kind of in the way. 
And so you're costing the contractor money. So he's not like pumped to pay you through that time. So that first year is just in-house. Here's, you know, all the tools that you're going to need. Here's the techniques. Here's actually how the various trades fit together mm -hmm. so that you can look at a building and understand its logic. Mm -hmm. And then after that. But what else is happening the yeah. first year? Maybe it makes sense to kind of go through the 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 life of a student. Yeah. Well, I'll, just, so I'll just finish off by say, saying, you know, after that first year, kids will be able to, the students will be able to earn enough money where they can pay forward each quarter. Mm -hmm. So it, after that, it's a, it's a completely different financial game for them. Right, wow. right. As far as the trade training in that yeah. first year, the idea or our goal is to make it so that a student could, can, after completing that year, will be able to be on the job site and be helpful. Right. I mean, that's one of those things that sometimes even on the job site, it takes somebody six months to a year to just not be like, it, as you said, in the way mm -hmm. uh, for somebody to kind of anticipate what they're going to be called to do on the job site and how they're they're going to be helpful right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. So I think contractors are going to love us Yeah. because as the <laughs> students go and, and work for people, they're, they'll show up with some skill. Wow. It's going to be extremely helpful. But also in that first year, as you said, I mean, you're 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 a big mind I mean, behind the, the, it. The the idea, like you were saying, is to combine the head and the hands here. And so and so as in that as you're learning the trades and in the first year when you're just learning like the basics, getting your head around how to use the tools and what to do and, and that kind of thing, then you're simultaneously in the classroom mm -hmm. learning and we and we have a curriculum that is really a a rather a rather robust curriculum in the Catholic intellectual tradition as a whole, but it has certain focuses, mm. and that is that you know what the ideal the idea here, of course, is to produce out to produce or to 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 form. I guess is a better word of produce than produce. Um, uh, highly capable, highly functioning, flourishing lay people who are yeah. going to go out and work, and so the curriculum is really structured around that. Like what what are the things that a Catholic lay person should be an expert on? What should they know about? Mm -hmm. And so it focuses on, on um, I mean, it focuses on, on, like, on politics, on um, family, on work. But then in order to kind of become a master of those things, there's literature, there's history, there's mm -hmm. economics, yep. right? There's all, but the, the point is to form, is to form that, that mind that goes along with the skill in order to go out into the world and be a, just a dynamic, high, high, high functioning and happy layman. That's the idea. Yeah, I never yeah. heard the idea that the, the layman had a particular field for their vocation. I know that's maybe very basic. Of course, the vocation is not just like an endless or limitless um, sort of abstract do whatever you well, want to do. Well, people forget this. No, I did because as a lay, it's like, okay, well, priests do this, religious do this, right. and lay people do whatever. Well, I mean, it is like <laughs> right? the inverse of of the uh, monastic vows. Of I mean, they're taking vows of poverty. They're taking vows of chastity. Yeah. They're taking vows of obedience. What do you flip those around? I mean, the, the vow of, of poverty, that is like work. work. That's economics. Yeah. You know, what about chastity? That's it's family. That's family life. Yeah. And obedience? Well, Politics. I mean, we got to be, have beat him before rulers. <laughs> yeah. but, right. Exactly. No, I mean, it really is that, that, that there's a complementary, there's, there's a, it's a complement between the religious and the lay life, but they are, the, between the two of them, we sort of cover the basis. Right. right. And so we they act. don't give them up because they're bad. <laughs> right. You know, no, they're, no. They're, they're good things. And, and, that and need so to it be really sanctified. is the, I think, I actually think that in, in, traditional Catholic education that has sometimes been forgotten and mm. the the curriculums are are sometimes still sort of flowing out of a monastic tra tradition or a, or a clerical tradition of education sure. right yeah. and which is it, like we were saying good yep but but if you read like the documents of Vatican II on the lay the lay vocation who we are what we are called to do and it's like it's stuff like sanctify the temporal order conform the laws and cultures of our society to Christ. Well, it's right. like, you have to have, you have to know things <laughs> in order to do that. <laughs> yeah, right? Like you it. have to know, not just know the theology and the philosophy, but then you have to know like, what are laws? What is society? What is politics? Right. Mm -hmm. What is going on? I mean, you know, yeah, and right. so, and so we right. are, the curriculum is going to be, is designed in order to, to give them that, what they need. So you have, on the one hand, the skill to be able to make your way in a world, 
and then the knowledge to know how precisely to do yeah, that. Yeah, and obviously what we're getting at here is the formation of free, independent men or women. Just like America always dreamt of, baby. <laughs> yeah. No, really, like, like, like people who can come out into the world and not feel like they have to be subservient to big structures and big powers that dictate a way of life and agendas that are not um, – that are not holy or not proper, not just, yeah. but you come out with both the knowledge and the skills to, to, to actually become a ruler, like you said, mm. and not, and not just a subject. Right. Well, you know, this and really, I don't mean to like, just say the American thing it's jokingly. True. I think it's just true. It's the best thing I mean, about America. It, I think it is like yeah, Jeffrey <laughs> just yeah. envisioned the yeoman farmer right. as the guy yeah. who's self-sufficient. He and Madison saying, you know, these are the guys who have a high commitment to their local communities. They are high in virtue because they actually have to work. work. They have to engage yep. that whole thing about industriousness. We'll talk about that at some point. Yep. I'm sure. Uh, it's They're politically it's just, independent because yeah. not only for a couple of reasons. One is that they ha they have skin in the game. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So they they huge. care. It's huge. Right. And that's yeah. a big thing. And they care locally. Right. Yeah. Like they don't not just some sort of abstract global politics or national politics, but like they care about where they live and work because that's that's what they're doing. They're working there. And then also they have um, because they have both skill and the virtue to use that skill and property. Yep. They're they're actually independent from large structures of power. Exactly. Yeah. And when things get uh, dicey in their work life, they can just do their own thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is what many of the guys that I've worked with have done. You know, they, mm -hmm. they've worked in larger businesses and then they start their own. Yeah, that's right. Well, and, and I think this is the other thing, and you know, we talk about this a lot in the in the office. Just in the twentieth century, we really praise the small business owner. Yeah, you know, and we've I'm not quite forgotten that vision. I think that's still just deeply rooted in all American hearts. I, and I and I think but, that you, when you brought up Jefferson and the yeoman farmer, it's the same idea in a different Absolutely. economic context. Yep. Yeah, right? exactly. like we're not a society of small farms anymore, but being a society of independent business, independent businesses is similar. Yeah. Yep. Well, and it seems like the Catholic <clears throat> tradition has always um, said this, and, and that's that ownership um, is the foundation for freedom, which Absolutely. is to say freedom is not this abstract capacity to do what you want. Um, freedom, it's the positive ability. The capacity right. to act. Right. And so in America now, especially with the crippling cost of higher education, you have people who have a theoretical freedom, yep. which is to say – you know, the world's open to you um, and there's not much constraint on you living how you want and expressing yourself how you want. But you got to come up with a thousand bucks a month. To you pay formed your, your mind. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to cost you, buddy. And, and but you your can actual your mind. capacity for action in the world is almost nil right. because you have such a debt to pay. Yep. And I, it, and you don't own and property. It, you don't own yep. land. You and don't you don't own, own skills. The yeah. skill, and that's right, because the skills that you've learned, if you've learned any in college is it are skills that that are designed to be integrated into giant mechanisms sure right yeah. right like right. they're not self-sufficient skills right. yeah i'm thinking of popularum progressio where paul the six is praising the missionaries who would go out into the third world countries and and before big businesses would i mean this is how he talks about it and he's and the missionaries would not only bring them the gospel but actually the skills to be able to be free, to be independent, so as to preserve the principles of the gospel as well. Right. Uh, I mean, yeah. and that's, again, the same thing, what John Paul II is, is talking about in Centesimus Annus, maybe like not as ex explicitly saying, all right, you missionaries, you save the day, but saying that skills are primary. You know, you have to have some productive property to work to be able to exercise those, um, but, but guarding the actual ability to do things, the capacity to to achieve the priority effects. of labor over capital, John Paul II. Oh, oh, well, that, <laughs> that sounds bad, but, <laughs> but, but if you understood properly, that's what we're talking exactly. about. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so I've seen in my life uh, many examples of people who've gone through and become very skilled in a trade, and they write their own ticket. You know, they've mm. they've got a the, the skills that ownership of skill itself is so valuable. They don't. They're not bound to any specific location. They can live where they want. They can do the kind of work that they want. They can have their own business or they can work with a partner or it's always in demand too. It's always in demand. And especially yep. these days with the trades, isn't it Mike? Absolutely. You just can't find people to do things. It's, it's crazy. Really? 
Yeah, and, and, and I think society, rec- I mean, I, at least I have seen more and more reference to that problem just in the pop culture. Like mm-hmm. more and more Absolutely. reference to the, yep. the trades. Maybe should, people should reconsider the trades. We need right the trades. And I, and I think an aspect of that is that as we've, as we have homogenized our economy, I don't know, outsourced all the, the manufacturing, yep. outsourced as much of the, la- even the white collar labor, outsourced as much as you can, you can't really outsource the skilled trades, can you? Nope. I mean, <laughs> someone's got to build the house. That's yeah. here. <laughs> here and now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You can't import all the Chinese for a day to build your house and, then and put send them back. back. Send them yeah, back. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is interesting because the whole, everybody needs to go to the college. Let's up student loans, make it, yep. a, you know, the feds can ensure that everybody goes off to college, that sort of thing. You know, it does go hand in hand with the outsourcing of menial jobs and people are forgetting just how, uh, highly rational the skilled trades are like, absolutely uh, how you are constantly thinking designing figuring yep. things out you're doing your you're like you're engineering your physics figure out flow whatever you know yep. to actually get get the building functioning properly and I, also i just think that you've noticed the the change i mean in in our town you go up to labelle it's not a like a nice neighborhood and you'll walk into these houses and there's just beautiful woodworking yep. i mean absolutely gorgeous yeah. and this is just kind of a, a common house up there that's not where like the managers of the mills were living i mean i guess on one street they were <laughs> but for the most part it's it's just a it was regular the work- it was the yeah. workers yeah and that was and those was like the quality of their houses all of a sudden i mean there's so many factors here but you know one of them is just we've sent out We've told people that the blue collar trades are no longer dignified. Uh, we've gotten back exactly. into that Aristotelian Ciceronian idea that if you're touching things with your hands, it's servile work. Right. Um, forgetting that Christ himself, God himself, spent most of the years of his life at a workbench. Yep. And, and, and it's just no wonder that the quality of our buildings have significantly decreased. The quality of our homes have significantly right. re- decreased. Things are breaking all the time in a way that they just didn't. Things just don't look as beautiful. The as beauty, they used to. The beauty yeah. is a key because, uh, I mean, Mike, you know this as a as a as a construction guy that when people get really good at a, at a trade, it 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 goes past the utilitarian like doing it doing it so it works Absolutely. to the point where it becomes elegant. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, you, yeah. <laughs> you, open a, you open an electrical box that a highly skilled, intelligent guy worked on and it's just, you know, there's it's a, like beauty a symphony. To it. Yeah. It's yeah. Like yeah. Beautiful. Right. <laughs> um, and then, or the way that somebody does conduit or even duct work. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's just a purely functional thing, but they turn it into something beautiful because they can't. Because they're so and good they at so it much, that it matters. Every little every piece. Little pe- yep, yeah. Every yeah. little thing matters. I have a, right. an electrician that I hired recently to do a little job for me. And he used a laser level to figure out where to drill across the stud lines. And so if you, ever, very, if you ever were hanging dry, ripping the drywall off and you know putting exactly it back on, it would it be, is. yeah. Exactly where line. it is. And the guy, <laughs> I mean, of course, that's, every, you know, many people would say, well, that's just overkill. But this was a, was a very nice job in a very nice house. And everything else was perfect. And he... It did a perfect Let's job make with it the perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's ever going to see it except for me. And I think it was just, uh, it was, it, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like the whole Steve Jobs said that in the inside of a computer it had to be organized and beautiful. You yeah. know, and there's one side, it seems insane, but on the other, you, you think, well, that's actually properly human. We have to, yeah, yeah we have to fight yeah. the temptation to just make something that's, that's practical. Um, just ugly you know we've got to we can make everything beautiful you know we've got to put ourselves into things and and this seems to be yeah it seems to be a part of the marriage between the intellectual tradition that we want the school to teach and then the skills they want to teach because ultimately what we end up teaching is that there's an order to the cosmos Mm -hmm. um, and that the unity between form and function between how something appears and what something does is not accidental. It's not like, well, you can make it work and then you can embellish it in an unnecessary way so that it looks beautiful. Mm, like that, yeah. that has been a, it's quite the opposite. It's precisely by making things work in order with the world. You're also making them beautiful because, you know, beauty is a kind of order. This is, this is so uh, order is a kind of beauty. It's so important. And human beings are the only ones capable of, of forming things in, 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 into beauty. Yeah. And so, like you said, the, the cosmos has an order to it, 
but there's a certain unfinishedness to it. I mean, what I mean is like human beings are called yeah. to then to then order it as an as something that is beautiful and, and elevate it um, as yeah. really a, a way of offering the cosmos back to God. And this is kind of abstract theolo- theology, but it's real. I mean, it, and it's what you were what you were talking about with form and function is an important thing. My dad growing up, my dad is an architect and, and he used to say these sorts of things to me like, well, if a house is just to keep the rain off you, then why don't we just live in a steel container, like one of those shipping containers? Yeah. yeah. And it's like, that would do that. And mm-hmm. he's like, but that's not what a house is for. A house is for human flourishing, right? which it's not just to keep the rain off you and to, and to keep you cool in the summer. It's like, it's for you to be happy in. That's right. what it's actually for. And that, and there, the function is the form. Mm, yep. The form absolutely. is, the, I mean, they, they, they converge into each other. Yep. Right. Absolutely. Because we're not happy in ugly things. Yeah. And right. I hope, <laughs> our hope is that the college is, is teaching precisely this, like to grasp the Catholic vision of the order of the cosmos through the kind of intellectual work that we'll be doing in our classrooms is to be the kind of person who can see how his work fits into building up that cosmos into a beautiful temple for God. Right. You know, right. when Adam was given the commission to work, it was also to order, to till, and to keep, which mm-hmm. is quite literally referencing tilling, you know, in lines, making the making the world ordered, making the plants grow, you know, in a way that is yep. they won't do on their own, <laughs> and keeping, you know, uh, reference to shepherding, which is the same with the animals. Which is then language that's used later in the scripture to refer to the temple and the temple service, the liturgical service, and that's not a coincidence. Yeah, I mean that's like because that kind of work is like you were saying an act of, of worship if done properly. And it does seem to me that there is a odd idea that you can separate these two within a lot of higher education, even Catholic uh, education. I think sometimes the, sometimes Catholic education can lean too heavily on um, uh, sort of liberal arts notions that take a lot more from um, the Greeks or like Aristotle than yep. they do from the medievals. Yeah, right. I think that's um, absolutely right, yeah. And we can sometimes forget, I think, because, you know, obviously St. Thomas Aquinas baptized Aristotle, we forget that he had to be baptized, right? And so, yeah. 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 Uh, and it's interesting on this point, I mean, when, you know, in his commentaries on Aristotle's work, you actually find, like, the point of, like, most severe disagreement is on the idea of work. Wow. Well, you know, where... Because Aristotle actually says that, that you, well, how does he say it? You can't grow in virtue in a human perfection is impossible to the worker to the in worker. fact yeah he goes so far as to say that citizenship is impossible that right. even happiness properly speaking i mean this is just paganism okay so like we don't yeah. we, right. christians don't believe that yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it does seem it does seem and you can't really baptize that no, that's the part you just get rid of yeah, yeah exactly. well, every yeah. baptism has an exorcism yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, no, yeah. and John Paul II, John Paul II talks about this. How, yeah. how this yeah. is a, a a sea change. Like it's not like a little yeah, tweak. Right. Like the, what Christian what Christianity brings is that no human humans are dignified in including in what is required for our life. It's not like so Aristotle has this idea, and this is maybe we don't need to get into this, but like in order for human perfection to be achieved, there has to be slaves. Mm-hmm. Because the slaves have to provide what the humans because human needs are somehow gross or degrading sure right. yeah right and that's and the, the, but the incarnation does away with that entirely right. it's like no yep. actually our material yep. needs are dignified yep. right right, right? <laughs> yeah. if, if the baseline of any economy is food shelter and clothing like if those are just necessary that god in his infinite wisdom designed the the cosmos so that those are the things that we all just have to do then that can't be a stumbling block to our perfection. perfection that has to be the means exactly. to it right. and i think you know and, and just to go along with it i think so much of the work i mean the, the work that the pagans idealized was something that was superfluous actually sure. mm-hmm. right and yeah. um and i think in in similar ways you start to see that in liberal education creeping in where the best type of knowledge is superfluous right. knowledge, yep. uh, nothing, not the contemplation that leads to activation, as as the monastery is so praised, you know, right. and from and from the active life back to the contemplative, so they're uh, mutually reinforcing and totally intertwined. I mean, that's the Christian incarnation, the Word becoming flesh, right there. And and I and I and, and Saint Thomas, of course, brings up the problem of the education and kind of the famous studiositas curiositas Mm -hmm. dichotomy Mm -hmm. whereas studiositas is really this desire to know the order of the world that god has created 
so right. as to till in the keep, so as to cultivate. Right. Whereas curiositas is just kind of you know you know scratching an intellectual itch. At worst, mm -hmm. it's manipulation mm. of of the world. Right. It's idle. It's yeah. It's <laughs> idle. Most yeah. most fundamentally, it's no, idle. I, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> but how much does work still have that same sort of basis? Mm -hmm. Where on the one hand you have the virtue of industriousness. I mean, this is something that John Paul II also talks about. But you yeah. also find it in medievals in Bonaventure and Peter John of Olivi. These guys uh, talk about industriousness as as a way of striving for working for the common good like having your work be a gift that you can give someone else right. well in the same way that you have studiositas and curiositas you can have industriousness and and toilsome labor mm -hmm. um not toilsome in the sense of the guy in the factory who's producing the shirts for us to wear i think that's toilsome don't get me wrong there's some sort of abuse going on but a type of labor that's not actually achieving good work for the right. common good right you know something that is you know, engaging in zero sum, you know, speculative games as John Paul II, you know, that's his prime example right there um, is, is work that is like hard work that you're like striving after you're, you're spending the time with it, but it's not actually cultivating a greater society. Now, it's, one not of the, building something. it's not building yeah. something. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I'm very interested in, because uh, I think it's just so beautiful. Catholicism is so awesome. The way that, <laughs> that what you're talking about there is... A sort of path to to human human flourishing or human perfection in work, but then that's totally congruent with the formation of a just society. Because when you have human beings that are pursuing that kind of work and that sort of perfection, it's also the conditions of possibility for a, a society of free people who behave justly, mm -hmm. right? And if you if you if you don't if you aren't doing that kind of a work, that kind of work, so you're doing toilsome work, mm -hmm. idle sort of work. Then it's almost a matter of necessity that you have society organized as a a giant factory or a giant sort of yeah I'm top thinking, down you know mechanism. I'm thinking about how the the immediate similarity between Aristotle's description of some menial labor as being inherently undignified, and it reminds me of um, the Egyptian ancient Egyptian. It's called the satire on the trades, but there's basically a very similar thing within the Egyptian kingdoms that basically there's this mass of just undignified and toilsome labor that you just have to do and it's always a curse and the gods sort of are, yeah, it's a punishment the gods made you do it and, and in some of the ancient sumerian cultures it's precisely that the gods had to do all this toil and they managed to pawn it off on people yeah. so you, it's, it's so of course the gods are really just the rich people yeah exactly but <laughs> but it's really obvious, right, that if you are going to have um, a society of th that paganism wants, which, which basically concentrates power into the hands of few men over and against many, then you have to have a kind of ideological project of cursing the kind of labor that gives people freedom and independence. Because if you have independent and free people, by definition, you don't have... Uh, a undistributed amassment of power in the hands of a few over and against everyone right. else. Right. So there's a way in which it's just like you could probably track a society's tendency towards becoming a slave state versus becoming a Christian kingdom on the basis of what they think about people who use hammers. I'm sure they correlate. Yeah, totally. Yep. 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 So we don't want a slave state. That's what we're saying. Yeah. No. We got to work <laughs> and out. You don't want to be a slave. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't want to be a slave. Let's work together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this is kind of so. These are the uh, the ideas behind what we're trying to do, and we're yeah. launching our school at the College of Saint Joseph the Worker, uh, fall of 2023. That's right. And the first year program, the first year will be a uh, kind of a combined program of shop time and and studies. And uh, after that first year, then the students will split into two different groups um, or can split into two different groups where there's a trade focus and then an academic focus. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Yeah. At that point you have, you know, not everybody is called to the trades, but everybody in a sense is called to figure out how they use their hands well and, and how to fix their house <laughs> how to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How to not yeah. be helpless yeah, yeah. Yeah. helpful to everyone <laughs> yeah so, uh, no i think it's worth saying that because it's yeah. like w one of the things that has been so valuable about living here is not that i've become a bricklayer like i obviously should still haven't yet but because in working with people like you 
the ideal of being able to fix your own house and to do your own projects. Mm -hmm. And if you have any productive property to be able to use it has been like totally inculcated in me. Mm -hmm. And so I, I find that I know a lot more than other people I talk to, not because I like took a class, or, but just literally you create a culture in which work is valued. And then it becomes a little bit embarrassing if I was going to tell you guys like, <laughs> yeah, I paid for someone to, I don't know. Someone came and changed my light bulbs. Right. So yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then, you know what? There, I don't, I, I don't mean to take it back into the abstract, but this is what I do. <laughs> the, 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 there's, there's something really to that. So even if you, even if one pursued the track, where you're not going to be a professional tradesman, that's not the vocation, mm -hmm. but you're, so you're going to the academic, more academic track. Maybe yep. you're going to go to a professional program or do something, but at the same time, you're learning the trades at a basic level. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you're doing it in the shop and you're doing electives that are along those lines. One of the things that I think that really does is that when people, and this is going to sound maybe abstract, but I think it's true that when people have a sense of how the things around them work, mm -hmm. The world is less anxiety ridden. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right, like like it's when you realize that oh, just a bunch of guys built this. This isn't like <laughs> yeah. this isn't some magic trick. I don't have to be scared of the car or the how or the the structures of society. Absolutely, they're below me, not above me. Yep. Right, and like absolutely. that mindset is is a, a liberating mindset, Completely. even if you're not a tradesman. I I totally yep. agree. I've had that experience. A thousand times in yep, my life right. where I'm I'm working on something, trying to figure it out. I've never even looked at whatever it is. So let's say it's a, a furnace component or a tractor part or so, whatever it is. Um, and I think to myself, well, a dude made this. Right. I'm, a, I'm dude. a dude. <laughs> <laughs> I can figure out how he did it. <laughs> yeah. But there, no. there, there is a fear inculcated in people to that, that stops them from opening up the hood. Right. Yeah. As I, I felt that. And entirely like I mean and some of this is very natural right because as a kid you grow up and the world is given to you as completed you don't conceptualize it as coming forth from human ingenuity it's just there and you're mm -hmm. living in it so there's a natural way in which the realization like oh this is actually contingent on us and that means that contingent on me is scary like mm -hmm. that and I think that's a is a natural fear in the sense of like it's part of growing in wisdom is to make that transition and say, no, it's not just going to happen. It's not just nature here. It's like you, right. <laughs> you got to do it. Yep. But what we've done in our society is basically um, try to move money around in such a way that, that you can remain a child, remain in that fear and never grow in maturity and right. continue to view things as natural objects. And so as being impenetrable to your ingenuity and your skill, it's mm -hmm. like the car is super scary and we just buy new ones and we just buy new clothes and we buy new and that produces anxiety that right. produces worry and that right, produces you're never... that produces leverage for people that want to take advantage of you and yep. I, and that's the, the the road to tyranny i mean that's totally. it, and 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 so even even the professional or the academic track here still has the same the same uh objective that we've been talking yeah, about with tyranny the trades. repellent yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah so so either direction you go um you're getting both the, it's both the head and the hands the, me the mechanism of the world and how we understand the world are always together in both tracks. Yeah. And there's kind yeah. of an emphasis here as well. I mean, so you used to work as a carpenter. Yeah. You do work as a carpenter. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a, you know, a, a higher, you're a, you're a professor at Franciscan University uh, full time. You're, you're, you studied history, you have a PhD, you have higher degrees in theology yourself, but there's the, the, the mm -hmm. differences between the emphasizing like the primary work of yours is uh is academic primary work of yours is in the skilled trades but you have to have both well yeah and, and, like, so, and like i do i do almost all the work in my house yeah and then every once in a while i'll send a text to mike <laughs> something like do you think this electrical looks okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like i wouldn't touch that or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because, because you know like i Wait, know my way around yourself? it but i'm not the expert <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> But you kind of both, in some strange way, uh, are are the mascots of the two tracks in that in that regard. Mm -hmm. I mean, we yeah. like when first, you know, Andrew and I spent a lot of time, like in the early months, like putting this, all the numbers together and whatnot. And we ultimately just realized we're trying to produce Mike Sullivan's. Like, if we're gonna do that, we just gotta have him at the helm. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's that's what yeah. ended up happening. So we're really well, excited. I'm flattered about that, by that, yeah. but I also wonder about your judgment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gonna be great. No, it's gonna be awesome. The it's other thing, fun. the last kind of track that we have on offer to people is uh, like a, a craftsmanship certificate. So this is a gap year yeah, program. One year. Yeah. yeah, gap year. You know, one year program. I mean, you could be done with college. You could be, you know, about to go into it. Uh, you know, the kind of the studies are clear on this. You know, the guys who take a year off before going to college yep. to do something, they they have a better sense of purpose of what they actually want yep. to do they have a better sense of purpose in their studies itself they're and, more focused and they do better yep. they and just they do, do better, better. Yep. so i think you know gap years are slowly on the rise. there's standard in england you know it's yeah. so funny there uh, it's a completely different culture that. that's, yeah that's I, everybody does it pretty much uh, here it's kind of slowly on the rise and um and so we're making that available to people all the you sullivans know. do it See? Every one of my kids will, you know, yeah. that's one of the things we yeah. kind of Common encourage. Sense, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what else? I mean, what, what are some of the more, like, mechanical details of this thing? Like, it's in Steubenville, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> right? So just, I don't think we've even mentioned that. <laughs> yeah. That's where we are. We're not going to move. We assume Steubenville's yeah. sort of the center of the, the, the world. True pole of the earth. Yeah, yeah. right, right. The capital. <laughs> the capital. So, uh, obviously, it's in the capital. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where else are you going to restore the country? <laughs> <laughs> um and there's a the, the there's a big shop workshop here that we have with all the tools and everything ready the guys are are in place to start doing the teaching and then um uh classrooms you know housing is 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 being established and well the housing is pretty fun so this is actually mm -hmm. it's called uh the villa maria yeah uh, it's a former uh religious order housing for the for the marian fathers it's beautiful. Uh, no, it was no? The, there was the Brothers of the Immaculate Conception. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they were a local, uh, local order that just were developed to serve this diocese. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And there were two of them left. Oh. There used to be a large, a pretty significant number of them. I'm not sure how many, but they were just in this diocese and two anyway, of them it's appropriate anyway then, yeah. it's appropriate then that their facility is being repurposed for yep. what we're doing. And it's beautiful. Gorgeous yeah. cherry paneling inside. Um, yeah. there's it's a very large house it will be a great place for for the guys to live girls will send them off somewhere else it was the yeah, first but, yeah. seminary of the diocese of steubenville wow that's where the where the men all lived and then they then they built this the um the one in bloomingdale awesome oh so that, and now we don't have a seminary here but Back but we're going to have this college oh, we're going to have this college <laughs> <laughs> you know alex wren you know who is like you know the the, the magician behind He's the curtain, the you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, in this whole process. He he said that if we tried to start a seminary, he'd quit and go find something else. <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely didn't sound fun. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's it's, I it's, it's, too, it's uh, yeah. Yeah. the campus. Then is you know it, the the college will be in downtown Steubenville. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's a it's a. You know, a bit, a bit, the, an aspect of this is the students are being integrated into the Steubenville community life, yeah. yep. which is rather um, bustling. Yeah, booming. seriously, these days, goodness. these days, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it is. Again, I don't want to too much cast aspersions on higher education, but it, there's the general college campus feel has, has kind of become a bubble. No mm -hmm. matter where Absolutely. you're talking about, if there's yeah. like a public university, private university, it's kind of protected off. I mean, the idea of, of, I mean, you just mentioned student housing, but it's, all, but it is like a house and uh, mm -hmm. we have a very different model. I'll talk about that in a second. It's not like a dorm, which mm -hmm. is again, like a container. It is more like the shipping right. container. Thing, right, right. <laughs> uh, where you put there, you don't have any responsibility over it. Uh, you, you never really learned. You get a chance at learning how to fix things. You call a maintenance yep. guy if there ever is a problem that rarely maybe ever is. Maybe cook dinner. Yeah, you and might maybe, cook dinner. Maybe do your laundry. Yeah. <laughs> Stinking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah. and I think that's part of the problem of, of seeing kids seep further into adolescence as they go into college. Yep. You know, Absolutely. I certainly saw yep. that in myself. You yep. know, when I went to undergraduate, that um, so, you yeah. know my parents were doing pretty well, and then I you know went down again. <laughs> you're, you're actually saying that that kids will have some responsibility over the housing yeah i guess the first thing is just being integrated in the community yeah. like so that yeah. you're not just ice like you're not only dealing with people your own age you yeah. know you're going to be part of the parish you know we don't just have a particular order that's over you we, we're partnering with the diocese of steubenville this is not a like a diocesan project uh, but you know the bishops mm -hmm. on our board 
uh, of advisors. Very strongly um, endorsed us and gave us his blessing. Yeah, we're partnering with you know the local parishes. Uh, the priests are are, are great, um, but we want them to be actively engaged in parish life. Um, but also, as it pertains to housing, we're not charging for for housing. You know, this is one of the things that, in the model. So, because we want kids to be the students to be able to be raised up into owners, we don't have an yep. ownership society. We're not used to what that means, the responsibility that it requires. Yep. And so, we're going to have them pay their utilities and their taxes, and do some maintenance on and the do house, the basic maintenance. Yeah. yeah. If they want something improved, awesome, go build it. Yep. You know, it's yours. Yep. Um, so this is this is part of the, you know, popping of the bubble, as it were. Well, it does seem to me like, again, in every university around the country, the movement has been to create worlds, um, uh, totally self-sufficient worlds um, to the detriment of cities um, and locations in which these universities are. Because what you have is, I mean, think about it. The bureaucratic bloat that most um, universities take on themselves, just the sheer amount of money going to sustain a bureaucracy that's essentially in charge for entertaining students, housing students, creating um, like the entire food production and eating sort of, you know, yeah, it's like a little canteen. City. <laughs> um, yeah. A little it's centralized. Like, it is. The mess all yeah, there's highly a, the, centralized. The term city. for this, the universe city. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and it's um, one of the, one of the damaging things it does to the laity is that it creates the perception that well it creates two perceptions i think one is that the entirety of your responsibility and your freedom is exhausted within campus itself right. because it has that feeling of a complete world it means that you essentially take four years off from <laughs> uh being in the world I and this creates habits in a person especially at that age it creates habits where it's not like when you exit university you say something like and now i will having taken my four years to develop the habit of living in a theme park for education i will i will now engage the real world in a real way you start you, you become accustomed to dealing with the real world as if it is a series of other like large institutions that have their own kind of self-sufficiency mm -hmm. in which you are completely either taken care of or, or subjugated to, yep. um, you don't have the sense of freedom in a world that's changing and is at the disposal of your power. Like I can do things here. I don't just consume it. I, I do things. Yeah. Right. Um, of course I'm being, I'm exaggerating, right? Cause it's obviously, I'm not saying that, you know, people do this even on the university campuses because because it's human nature humans are real not yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so of course there's this great diversity of of culture that that people will do no matter what but what i love about the college of saint joseph the worker is the intention is not to wait around for four years but to begin both begin. in terms of how, exactly. how you work how you study yeah. and how you live you you're beginning you're you're beginning your lay vocation. You're not prepping for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yep. man, like the number of uh, if I could name one problem in the church today is that everyone's preparing for a holiness that never comes, right? <laughs> like we talk, like Jacob and I talk to people who are like they're preparing to use all of their money for this good thing. Until they get there, they're going to keep investing it and keep on making more right. money in the stock market. And eventually, sure. of course, what does that do? Well, it builds a habit that by the time you get to that point. Where you're like, you time to spend to. all that money. Right. You've just habituated yourself to not spending money. And you're right. like, oh, well, now I really have to be responsible yeah. again. You have to keep changing <laughs> the definition of an enough. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, and it's the same. Yeah. And so we, we tell ourselves these stories of how later we'll begin to be Christian and then we die. Right. And so I think one of the, the great things about this um, model, and it's not even so much a model as it is just a very stirring call to students, mm -hmm. which is yes. to live now. That's right. Begin now. And it makes a lot of sense to me. Just be a grown up. Yeah. Well, I think about like, <laughs> you know, it. I grew up in the whole like World Youth Day, like kind of push. Uh, I guess that's, I mean, you know, I'm talking about like yeah, World yeah, Youth Day culture, diocesan yep. retreat sort of thing, yeah. the youth. Yep. And it just struck me that the popes are just constantly showing up to young people and telling them to not be afraid. Um, and, and this seems to be what's what's really fundamental. You can hear that. It just sounds like, okay, yeah, you're being nice to kids. Kids like to hear that. It sounds but like a platitude, but it's not. It's not because the presumption is that they are afraid mm -hmm. and that they need to stop being so scared. Yep. And it's not just saying like, you guys are great. 
go go do well on your sports team or whatever. It's saying like you are in a society of fear, regulated by fear. In order to be Christian, you need to not be afraid. That's how you begin. And so if we cannot be afraid of the world around us, if we cannot be afraid of the communities around us, and if we cannot be afraid of the cosmos, like really engaging it, then I think we're kind of trying to, we are fulfilling the, the, I say the Pope's demand, obviously Jesus Christ's demand Mm -hmm. to not be afraid. And so that we can build societies that don't find their cohesion on the basis of a mutual fear and anxiety, but find their cohesion in in love and, and the willingness to risk. Yep. Seems to me. Seems to me that the college is going to help us get there. Well, please God, let it be. Yeah. So, if you want to come to the college, here's the great, great pitch. Uh, applications are open. We'd love to to consider your application for the fall of 2023. Um, if you want to donate to the college, please do. Um, we have both the sections of being able to sponsor students. Um, it's, you know, $15,000 is all that we'll get through people going on the, that craftsmanship uh, or the craftsman track. Uh, after that first $15,000 for that first year, they're going to be making enough money to go forward. The entirety of the accelerated track for those who are choosing to go down the more heavily academic track and, and not become a journeyman, they're going to be graduating in three years You know, for a total, this includes tuition and and room for those three years of $45,000. I mean, Which that's just like one year yep. at a normal school. Totally. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you want to sponsor students, that's a great way of doing it. We're trying to expand. Um, we're kind of in the, the early rental TAC model type thing at yep. the beginning when they're in trailer parks or whatever. I don't know how real that story is, but it's an awesome kind of like they started had, Apple in our garage thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so we, we want to expand into our own academic building. We, we have this beautiful workshop right now. The diocese is, is being great to us, letting us use an old um, school uh, of theirs that's, that's now empty. It's, it's beautiful over like with a great view and everything in it too. So it's a great place to be um, for these early years. We're doing better than, than trailers for yeah. now. But, and uh, that's for our classroom space. That's for our yeah, classroom, classroom space. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we also need to add on to student housing in, in the years to come. So there's, there's many good things to... Um, to give to in the college as well. Totally. And we'd be really grateful for, for your donations and your alms. Um, and what's the application? I mean, what, what do people need to apply? Um, well, it includes uh, a 10 mile run. Good. Yep. And <laughs> push up content. Yeah. No, I'm out. <laughs> you know, I'm selling you out. Mark used to do clap push ups in the office at one point just to get the blood flowing. I yeah. don't think that's true. That doesn't sound like me. It's true. So <laughs> I witnessed you go to it. The College of St. Joseph the Worker dot com. Uh, College of St. Joseph dot com. So yeah. College of St. Joseph. Actually, I think we have all the URLs. So, so you okay. can go to any, any one of our yeah. So yeah. College of yeah. St. Joseph dot com. Yeah. There will be a link to apply and you can follow the process there. Yeah. 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 So that's the first is just a very general paperwork. Fill out, write your essays, make sure that you have all the smarts you need. Second phase is uh, actually we're going to have an interview with you. We'd like to see your face. We'd like yep. to get to know you. Yeah. Uh, like you to get to know us more personally as well as, as we start to get into that real evaluation for the next few years. And that's, and then you'll hear back from us and that's how it goes. Pretty simple. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> cool. Final thoughts. Let's do it. Let's yeah. Do it, man. Just, we're really, <laughs> really excited about this and everybody that we talk to about it is excited about it. And it's, uh, it's just something that we've all felt called to push forward and take yeah. on. And it's, uh, it's something that we really need. And it's going to be awesome. It is going yeah. to be awesome. I think the thing that made me really excited about it all was just that it kind of enacts something Andrew is always saying, which is, which is basically to not be afraid of power. Like to have a capacity for action is what we are made for. That's mm-hmm. right. And so having a school with that in mind that says, how do we create people who are powerful? Yep. It's awesome because like, you know, you get so much, you get so much baloney about, you know, we're forming students to change the world or whatever. Where, right. by which you mean we're not, <laughs> because because you, to change to, to do any kind of changing, of course, you have to have an independent power from which the world doesn't just change you. You right. can actually that's right uh, yeah. uh, contribute to building up the world. And so I'm I'm just really excited to be able to teach and to be able to um yeah me too you know 
create more powerful people. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. All right. Well, we'll look forward to seeing your applications, some of your donations, getting to know you, and um, and keep us in your prayers as we as we yeah. launch. Please do. All right. Thanks. 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 Thank you.